let's talk a little bit about workflow. I know that a lot of people are advocating very strongly for the use of AI in every single part of their workflow. Personally, I've mostly limited it to the early stage research behind uh, understanding a new tool, understanding a concept to get kind of a bit of an overview before I do more of a deep dive. I will also use it if I kind of just want the outcome, but not the actual understanding of something. YAML files, I'm talking to you. However, I never want this to come at the expense of knowing how to fish so to speak, which is having the resourcefulness to be able to solve the problem even in a more limited tool set. So let's say I don't have internet, no access to LLM, whatever. I think it's still important to know some steps that you can take to be able to solve problems in that kind of environment. Even if, you know, you can use an LLM most of the time. It's just like you should learn basic calculations like we do with mathematics. We still teach that in school. However, are you likely to have to do a bunch of different calculations without a calculator at your disposal? Probably not, but still important to know. So with programming, I'm going to give you a couple of my favorite resources and workflows for when I'm trying to dig up information without relying on AI. First one is definitely using what's built into my editor. Go to definition, get references. Uh, get definition or uh, it's like capital K. This one basically just gives you the, the signature of the method, which is helpful. I reference this all the time when I'm trying to remember what it's expecting from me and what kind of output I'm getting from that thing. I will also often reference tests if they exist and examples if they exist. If they don't exist and this is your project, please add those things. Like nobody else is going to know how to use your software if you don't have it explicitly stated somewhere how to use the thing. So work on that, please. Now, in terms of other external resources, I do like to reference documentation, of course. And one of my favorite ways to actually do that is with dev docs. This is a tool that I discovered actually through Doom Emacs. Typically your LSP is what's gonna pull up the definition when you do the capital K. However, if you hit capital K twice, or if it doesn't find the definition, that gives you the option to search through a bunch of other resources. And DevDocs was one of them. And so one day I decided to actually use that and see what came up. And DevDocs is actually pretty outstanding. If you are looking to just get better at reading documentation or you feel like it should be easier to find what you're looking for in documentation. DevDocs is a great open source project that allows you to do that. It combines a bunch of different API documentation all in one place that you can search through very quickly, very easily. So that means any programming language that you might be learning, any of their standard libraries, and it does support fuzzy finding as well, which is kind of nice. So you can add different patterns in there to make it even more specific. The thing that's pretty game changing with DevDocs is that it's also offline compatible. So previously I had tried out Dash, which is specifically for Mac OS. If your primary operating system is Mac OS, Dash is a really powerful tool. This is one that came recommended from different colleagues of mine, and it really is outstanding. What's nice with DevDocs is it's free and it works on all operating systems. So. Even if you want that convenience of having something offline, so like say you wanna actually go touch grass and go code at the park, then you can still do that and not have to eat away a ton of data. Also, it can save you a buck or two if you are doing a lot with AI, there's no shame in the game, okay, I understand. This might just be one way that you can kind of keep that convenience factor while also reducing your costs a little bit. <laughs> Of course, I've mentioned before that books are always a good backbone for me when I'm learning. I tend to lean towards books. It also just gives you a very reliable source of information and it can broaden your horizons of what you have kind of at your fingertips because oftentimes with a search engine, you can get a lot of great results. Sometimes you have to kind of dig through the results a bit more. Um, certain websites obviously stand out, right? Like I can and should probably just be searching on Stack Overflow or Super User in Discourse as well. Discourse is pretty sick. 
online communities, forums that are still alive and thriving in 2025. All of those are really great resources and honestly, I should be searching on those directly, but with search engines, you're limited to only being able to search for something specific. So if you don't know what you're looking for yet, then it's not super helpful, which is again, part of why I love books because there's a very clear path forward to be able to understand these concepts over time. Part of what I love about books is that they can expose you to a wider, not only vocabulary of things, topics to search, but of course there's so much information in books that it can be maybe in some cases a bit too deep if you're trying to just get something done quickly. Or if you're just trying to satisfy a very limited use case and you're probably not gonna have to touch that technology much more in the future, then like you might not want to invest all of the time that it would take to be able to fully understand the topic through like reading a book or whatever. That said, I will often take a book and just kind of like jump around specific chapters that are really standing out to me at the time. Reading front to back, I don't know about you, but if I'm reading front to back, if I get sidetracked for a week reading it and I forget what I've read and I feel the need, then I feel the need to reread it and then I start from the beginning because I don't want to lose context and it's a whole thing. Whereas generally speaking, in a lot of technical books, you can kind of like just jump to a chapter. Even if you don't understand it the first time, jump to that chapter. Okay, I kind of didn't understand this specific part of it, but now I have a lot of context going on in my brain. So let me jump back to where they introduced that topic the first time, dive into it a little bit, and then things will start to piece together pretty quickly up here. Your subconscious is really good at processing things and letting it kind of marinate and idle with a lot of things that you don't understand, at least for me, tends to be a very effective way to learn. Not trying to understand everything perfectly the first time and rather trying to get yourself exposure to, to things that you don't understand so that you can start to see it in context and then your brain will start to like make those associations as you dive, dive into it further. To recap, what I would use if I'm not using AI, but I'm still trying to learn and I'm still trying to program as a developer, you need references, you need, you need tools, whatever's built into your editor. That means go to definition, get references, see how the thing is being used. That means looking at tests, that means looking at examples. If the project doesn't have that, you might be out of luck, but you can still look to Sourcegraph. Sourcegraph is a great way to see what projects are using certain libraries. And even if there are certain functions that are declared in a library's API, you can use that as a kind of part of your search to be able to identify like other projects that are using that library and how they are using those functions. So you can kind of yoink their implementations capital K in my config, which I think just be like tooltip or hover or like show definition or something like that. Not quite go to definition, but just like it shows the signature. Uh, that is really helpful. And then dev docs is awesome. I highly recommend taking a look at it if you've never heard of it before. Dash is also another alternative option if you are on Mac OS. It is paid, but a lot of people that I know who are I consider to be very good programmers. They use that and they really enjoy it. They think it was a really worthwhile purchase. And then of course, if you're looking to understand a concept more deeply, which you will are likely to have to do if you're trying to solve a very specific problem, right? You need to understand all the layers to that thing to be able to express it properly in software, then books are great for that. And of course, search engines can be very helpful in particular if you're looking at like help with kind of a specific problem or you want to hear more from other users i love forms for that typically it would be stack overflow super user discourse those platforms are really good discourse in particular i do really like the ui it gives you really good email summaries of like what's been going on in the communities that you sign up for and it can be very compelling so that's what i would recommend to you let me know if you have any favorite references oh Hold on, can I even make a references super list without mentioning man pages? Duh, hello, that should be number one. Number one, man pages. I, because I use Emacs, by the way, I typically actually use, uh, there's a built-in man command, at least in Doom Emacs. So if you do Alt X, AKA MX, you can search for man, and then that command will actually allow you to see all the available man pages on your machine open it up in a buffer 
And if you do control X1, which I learned on stream today, thank you very much for mentioning that. If you do control X1, it'll convert that half page buffer into a full size buffer. And this is really my favorite way to look at man pages because it allows you to interact with it like any other file in your editor, which means you can search the buffer really quickly with uh, leader SB. I will say man pages plus the TLDR project that combo is really good because man pages give you a really detailed understanding of how to use a certain tool, but sometimes it's easy to get lost in the details. So TLDR is a tool at tldr.sh is the uh, actual domain if you want to check it out in your browser. TLDR, it gives you more of a recap. It is community driven. So people are like, I believe manually contributing these recaps. It essentially will give you a recap of what that command does and give you example usage for it. That might be helpful if you're just kind of starting out and you're getting a bit lost in the details with the man pages. You can look at TLDR first and then jump into the man pages or be overwhelmed with the man pages and then jump to TLDR, either or. But those would be some of my recommendations if you're looking for more documentation options, you're just kind of looking to see how you can learn to fish without relying on AI. These days, there's so much pressure to be using AI in like every part of your programming workflow. I do not use AI in most of my workflow. I will occasionally use it during kind of the research stage or if I'm looking for very specific feedback on stuff I've already produced, I am not typically using it to actually full on implement features for me just because it's the fun part, frankly, <laughs> to figure out how to implement the feature. So why would I delegate that? If anything, I need to delegate the parts that make it harder for me to get to that point that is my most enjoyable state while programming. Usually, that is getting feedback on my code. So, you know, before I officially ask for a PR review from some other person, I'll get AI to review it and I'll ask them to review it with much scrutiny, looking at uh, Linus Torvalds for inspo on that kind of vibe. I will also use AI to answer very specific questions that I'm encountering early on when I'm still just kind of getting my footing with the project. Even like under understanding some of the underlying things that I'm trying to model with software. For example, Freeze, which is a charm project that allows you to create SVGs or PNGs from a code file. If I wanted to get a better understanding to implement that kind of thing from scratch, I would have to get a really good understanding of SVGs and what they are. And I'd have to be able to not only visualize that, but be able to almost explain that to somebody else and understand all of the, the little pieces broken down to its simplest form. So understanding that there are different layers to it and what each of those layers would be called and kind of how I could uh, model that as data structures and then slowly start to tie it together. So I do find that kind of during that stage where I'm still just kind of figuring it out and I'm maybe a little bit out of my depth, which is kind of my favorite place to be and just trying to get a feel for it. That is a great time where I will use AI.